Residents of Southern Arizona have a love-hate relationship with Gila woodpeckers. These woodpeckers are very common at backyard feeders in desert communities. They eat every type of bird food you put out. They're active and playful, they're noisy with their squeaky toy calls, and they're fairly tame. They have endeared themselves to many. On the other hand, their energy and exuberance uh, can sometimes land them in trouble. Gila woodpeckers have the personality of Dennis the Menace. Both are curious and energetic, bold and fearless. Some would say they're lovable and innocent. Others claim they are mischievous and cause mayhem. In the spring, when their hormones are flowing, they pound on everything. They declare their territory by drumming on your roof vent, uh, your shed roof, and on your mailbox. Anything that will ring loudly. And oh, the holes. They can't help it. Spring is the time for drilling holes. They specialize in drilling nest holes in saguaro cacti. Uh, if they'd only stop there. No, the excess hormones drive these guys into drilling holes into everything. It's bad enough that Gila woodpeckers drill holes in the wood siding of your home, but they also drill holes in your stucco siding. As spring advances, the drumming starts earlier and earlier as the sun rises. Who likes to be awakened at dawn to drumming on the side of your bedroom wall? Do you pound back on the wall from the inside and attempt to frighten them off? Or do you open the front door and wave your arms and shout dressed in your PJs? That should scare them off for about 10 minutes. Later in this video, I'll discuss what I've found to discourage woodpeckers from drilling in your home siding. But now, let's learn some interesting facts about the Gila woodpecker. In the eastern United States, there's a similar looking widespread woodpecker. You may be familiar with the red-bellied woodpecker. These birds are both about nine inches long, bill tip to tail tip. Uh, their body color is a, a putty gray-brown. Their wings and back are covered with thin black and white zebra bars. In flight, both show small white wing patches. Gila woodpeckers, however, have a barred rump, uh, not white. Uh, they often show a yellow belly. And Gila woodpeckers have much less red on the head than red-bellied woodpeckers. In fact, the female Gila woodpecker lacks any red on the head at all. The male only has a small cap of red on the crown. Like all woodpeckers, these birds have large heads and chisel bills. They have short legs with large toes and claws for clinging to vertical surfaces, such as tree trunks or walls. They have short, stiff tail feathers that they use for a prop for climbing. And climb they do. Gila woodpeckers are very active climbing over the trunks and larger branches of desert trees. There they probe for insects, spiders, and other similar animals. They glean fruit and other plant material for food. They may feed on the ground, they cling to the sides of buildings. They often climb wooden electric poles to the top and perch on the crossbars. You may see them on the day high up on the top of metal light poles over a ball field or park. Usually they occur as uh, single birds or in pairs, uh, sometimes loose family groups of siblings in the fall. Gila woodpeckers are a keystone species of the Sonoran Desert. They are highly associated with saguaro cacti. You will often see them drilling and inspecting nest holes in these tall desert plants. I'll talk more about their role in the desert ecosystem in a moment. Gila woodpeckers are noisy birds. They give a variety of squeaky, strident, yapping or churring calls, similar to red-bellied woodpeckers. They sometimes roll their yapping calls together quickly to make a, a long kicking stutter, uh, similar to flickers. 
When I hear the squeaky toy noises from the feeder area, I know that the playful and a bit aggressive Gila woodpeckers have arrived. These birds are so continuously talkative that their calls seem to be a running commentary on their activities. They love to make noise. They rarely stay silent long. As with other woodpeckers, Gila woodpeckers have long tubular tongues. The tongues actually uh, splits and wraps over the, around the crown. This allows them to stick their tongue out two to three times the length of the bill. And the tip of the tongue is somewhat like a spear and somewhat like a brush. The sticky saliva grabs boring insects like glue and pulls them out of their drilled holes. Gila woodpeckers do not migrate. Uh, they live year-round in the Sonoran Desert. They barely extend their range outside of the range of the saguaro cacti. That means they're restricted to the southern half of Arizona and into the foothills of the state of Sonora, Mexico. These birds drill nest holes into large desert columnar cacti, primarily saguaros in the United States. But they also forage over desert trees such as Palo Verde, mesquite, acacia, and ironwood. Gila woodpeckers have made themselves right at home in residential towns and neighborhoods in the saguaro zone. Tucson, Arizona is a haven for Gila woodpeckers. They are perhaps the fourth or fifth most common year-round resident bird in Tucson, following morning dove, uh, house finch, house sparrow. They are not nearly as abundant as those top three species, but they are widespread. They are as ubiquitous as the curb-billed thrasher in residential yards. Every neighborhood has a pair, or several. There are about one and a half million adult Gila woodpeckers, according to Partners in Flight. 28% of these live in the United States, where the population is stable. The population in Mexico is, is dropping. It all has to do with the saguaro nest holes. There is competition with European starlings in more residential areas, and there is loss of habitat due to drought. Fewer new saguaros are starting to grow since a peak in the 1980s and 1990s. Gila woodpeckers eat fruit and seeds and nuts and insects and termites and even small lizards or the nestlings and eggs of small birds. Look for them probing the bark for beetles, look for them feeding on ants on the ground, and look for them eating dates in the palm trees, and look for them flying out to catch insects in the air. They are very easy to attract to your bird feeder. They eat everything, it seems. And they are the first to try a new bird food or feeder. Black oil sunflower seeds, suet, mealworms, orange slices, they love it all, and so will quickly come to a new feeder. On the other hand, there's no bird food they don't like. They may sit on a feeder and keep other birds away. This is especially uh, true of your hummingbird feeder. Their long, thin tongues lap up the nectar. The only difference? The woodpeckers are 15 to 25 times heavier than the hummingbird and guzzle a correspondingly larger amount of hummingbird nectar. In my yard, Gila woodpeckers don't seem to drink water or bathe at the bird bath. You can attract other birds with life-saving water and the woodpeckers won't take it over and keep other birds away from it. And as soon as I said this, I looked out the window and saw a Gila woodpecker getting a drink from the bird bath. Never say never with these birds. This is probably a good place to tell you how I discourage Gila woodpeckers from drilling into the side of my house in the spring. A bit of nervous drilling can happen at any time of year, but March through May is the time when Gila woodpeckers do the most damage to my home in Arizona. The siding on my house is very soft cedar. Woodpeckers can poke and probe a hole uh, into it in seconds. Judging from all the patches in the siding, this has been going on for years. I have found that reflective bird scare tape is an effective deterrent. I attach a, a foot or more of the ribbon 
to the house with a with a thumbtack. It tears easily, uh, so strengthen the hole with tape and push the thumbtack through the tape. This is very lightweight material and flutters with only a breath. The reflective holographic uh, surface gives off a rainbow of bright metallic colors and the tape gives a scraping sound as it moves that also seems to frighten the birds when it moves. Best of all, it only seems to scare away birds from a very close range. The tape doesn't seem to scare any birds far more than about three or four feet away. So I can put this scare tape on the house and it doesn't deter birds from the feeder 10 feet away. This drilling instinct takes over in the spring. Gila woodpeckers excavate many nest holes in saguaro cacti. The pulp-like interior of the cactus can't be used as a nest right away. The cavity has to dry out and scar over. Let's see my video, What is a Saguaro Boot? So the holes drilled in the saguaro this year won't be used as nests until next spring. And many of these holes will be used by other desert birds, ash-throated flycatchers, house finches, brown-crested flycatchers, elf owls, American kestrels, Lucy's warblers, cactus wrens, western screech owls, and desert purple martins. These woodpeckers drink the nectar of the flowers and eat the summer fruit of the saguaro. Thus, they help spread the seeds and keep the saguaro desert healthy. Gila woodpeckers lay three to six white eggs. Uh, they may lay one to three broods per season. The eggs hatch in about two weeks. Young hatch naked and helpless, but they are soon feathered and out of the nest to begin their life in imitation of Dennis the Menace. Finding Gila woodpeckers is just a matter of finding saguaro cacti in the desert of southern Arizona. Saguaros are found in washes, but especially on bajadas, or rocky lower slopes of the base of rugged hills and outcrops. Find the slopes with saguaros, and you've found Gila woodpecker habitat. Saguaro National Monument and Organ Pipe Cactus National Monument are two places where Gila woodpeckers are abundant. In the morning and evening, you may find Gila woodpeckers perched up high on the top of the cacti. In the heat of the day, these birds are more likely to be found in the shaded branches of Palo Verde and other desert trees. Listen for their shrieking cries and watch for them to chase each other actively.